Hello and welcome to the Bonus Points Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Garrett, once again being joined by Ollie Guy. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, uh, hello. Before we jump, <laughs> before we jump uh, straight into the podcast, a uh, little note. Uh, basically, I have uh, just recovered from COVID, so I'm fine now, but I have a lingering cough that's probably going to be around for a few weeks, so we've already delayed this uh, podcast by uh, one week. We didn't want to do it by any more, so I should hopefully be all right, but uh, I'll try and edit out as much coughing as I can, but there'll be some that, you know, if it's mid-sentence, yeah. that will be hard I, for me to, to cut out. I so, don't think your, of- your uh, health's worth any more than one week. One week of delay is enough, and then I'm like, okay, he can just die on air if he needs to. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, like, I'm I'm fine. Like, I'm over it. But the apparently the cough can carry on for a couple weeks. So, hopefully, that will be uh will be all right. Uh, But yeah, I haven't said what game we're doing. So, uh, we're going to be doing our first kind of modern AAA game on the podcast, and that is Halo Infinite. Yes, indeed. Uh, Just dropped. We were originally going to record this pretty soon after it drops obviously it's been delayed a week which actually i was quite happy about because it gave me loads of time to finish it um yeah yeah i don't have a ton of information about it other than it came out very (laughs) recently it was developed by 343 it's on xbox it's free if you've got game pass and it's on pc as well yeah and also the multiplayer is free for like everyone basically oh, yeah. you know yeah, you can course, yeah. you can stream it on x cloud for free on pc and like free free not even like you need xbox live gold it's like properly free really so um yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, that's like all like free to play multiplayer games are now free on xbox so it's like Fortnite. you don't need xbox live uh, oh. anymore which is um kind of okay. makes sense we're it's not xbox as- we don't work for xbox by the way but that's good information <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It well, it well sounds like it <laughs> yeah. um yeah so like I- i'm the bigger halo fan than than you are i guess yeah. throughout history but we we have a past kind of playing uh, i guess mainly halo 2 uh, in school we'd kind of kind of get together and kind of do i guess yes. sort of almost land like nights playing yes. halo 2 system link over the hallway halo 2 i remember to the point where i think we all bought the halo 2 do you remember the dlc came on a disc yeah yeah the multiplayer maps yeah on a disc, like tlc on a disc <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was like disc disc loadable content like how yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah those were good times back in the day like and also we didn't have voice chat because we play across the hallway so like we, we used to, to play and then we'd run into the room at the end and be like oh, i was the guy that shot you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but like but we were all like we played a decent bit, but we were all quite casual. None of yeah, us really. Yeah. It was it was much more for like the fun of like the social side and playing around and a lot of kind of personal jokes. But I, I kind of had that experience before that when I was in primary school, where my my mate had his Xbox and his mate had the same, and they drilled through the wall and put like a an Ethernet cable through it. So we would do lands like that through the bedroom wall, and we'd both open our windows, and so we'd be shouting. Yeah. Out like the oh back God. window going like got you and like yeah, yeah. and i was by far the worst because i was the only one who didn't own an xbox so they'd play all the time and i'd come yeah. in and i was just happy to be there but yeah, I, yeah. they never wanted me on their team yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so did you play like um kind of halo 3 or or, or reach or, or even 4 or 5 uh, so i played halo 3 when it came out because everyone got it and obviously we just yeah. got off the back of halo 2 which everyone loved and i also just got xbox live at that point so yeah. it used to be the, the done thing after school. You go on Halo 3 for like four hours, five hours. Yeah. yeah. And that was kind of the done thing until Modern Warfare, Call of Duty yeah. 4 Modern Warfare came out. Everyone was just on Halo all the time. I don't actually so know what, anyone what, that really got into Gears, but everyone loved Halo. So. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Halo, there was more to do in it in terms of like Gears, you go on and you'd play like the game modes, whereas mm. Halo, you could like hang out in. So were you mainly like... Just play. We will get to Halo Infinite at some point, but we're setting the scene. Um, <laughs> did, did you like just play like the normal game modes, or were you like a forger, or like did you like what did you do in Halo? I just 3? hung out and played big team battle. Really, big team battle yeah. was the fun. I mean, we, me and you used to play, but we were never yeah. when we played. We were never very good. Do you know what no. I mean? Like we were just yeah. like going in and messing around. Like, we weren't. Horrible, I, I remember like- us um, <laughs> spending time in theater, just going around like zooming in and thing like zooming in on the bullets and saying it, yeah. says, it says like master chief on them and like, we were just like <laughs> just yeah. playing around with that we, we were as big nerds back then as we are as Didn't we are now i remember doing that with his you. foot 
It says Andy it says- on one. On I think it might be Halo Two, maybe. But on one oh, of them, possibly. It's- yeah. Oh, really? Because yeah, Halo yeah. Two doesn't have like theater mode, so I guess someone would have to stand on your he- on your face so you can yeah, read you that. Yeah, you just crouch down with the uh, sniper rifle, zoom in. <laughs> yeah. But then, so did you play uh, any of them past three much? Uh, I finished ODST, and then I was okay. like, "That's enough." <laughs> I haven't played okay. enough once then. <laughs> and I will say, okay. I seem to have ejected the whole thing from my memory because when I was playing Halo Infinite and I saw how tall Master Chief was compared to the regular guy, I <laughs> yeah. thought this whole time he was regular height. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, he's a giant!" Like I <laughs> had no memory of anything really. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's always been a he's always been a big boy. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's being consistent. I think I think it's because um, yeah, it's just when you see it in third person. In first person, you don't really realize it when you're seeing the Marines, mm. but when you see him like side by side and like compare the size of his helmet compared to one of the Marines' face. Well, this kinda... is it, right? I was always like, his helmet is the size of a regular person's head. So how small must his head be? Yeah. <laughs> but then obviously it's not because he's bigger. But I didn't realize. Yeah, so I, I guess like... maybe he's padded everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. it's like <laughs> he has a tiny like tennis ball head. <laughs> that would be so be so funny. Like the dramatic reveal because they did do that. It was in a, I think it was in Halo. Is it in either Halo Four or Five? Where if you complete the game on Legendary, mm. you get a shot where he takes off the helmet. Mm. And like, but it's you can't see it very well. You can just see it's like, oh, a white guy, weird. You know, like there's nothing, there's nothing like notable <laughs> about like his face at all. It's like the most generic person. Yeah. Sorry to whatever actor had their face scanned in for that, but it seemed weird to do that as like they never show his face, but now we're gonna tease it, and it's like there's nothing notable about his face. At I all. didn't even <laughs> know they ever showed it. I never knew that. Yeah, I kind of want them to do like a uh, like a Metroid, and it's just a woman, but it's just like a voice changer. Or yeah. just, <laughs> like, or they're like, oh, I haven't cleared their throat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, that's better. <laughs> yeah. Time to finish the fight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, Halo Infinite. So I guess uh, start off with the uh, the campaign first. So we were, we were kind of at different places going in because I played Halo Four and Five. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of knew, you know, this is kind of the the new trilogy, Four, Five, and infinite you know is kind of marketed this is the new trilogy so i guess i'm assuming you didn't did you look up any story stuff or were you just going in completely blind i went in completely blind ready i went in with an open mind and i was like this is it let's do whatever it is that we're meant to be doing (laughs) like i literally know nothing about like okay that's not true so there's master chief's the main guy the aliens are called the covenant or they were and now they're called the banished you're on halo which is a big ring Mm-hmm. Which is a weapon, I think, if I remember correctly, it, like was a yeah. laser or something. Yeah, so that that's to kill the the flood. Remember the flood? The zombie yeah, they're things? like the zombie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but but it was the rings were basically okay. I won't get too into this, but yeah, the rings are basically yeah. meant they're meant to kill like everything. So the flood can't. So it's going to kill humans. It's going to kill everything in the universe, basically. Mm-hmm. So the, to then starve the flood, basically, is kind of the the point of them. So they're. But then what? Yeah. Then, then, like in time, you know, it would start again. I guess. Oh, I think. okay. Someone, okay. someone might correct me, but that, that, that's that's what I remember of it. But I mean, that's like so long history. So, how did you? Um, yeah, I guess we chat a little bit about the story first, uh, just seeing as we kind of started doing that. So, what was it like jumping into this game? Did you did you feel overwhelmed, or did it ease you in quite nicely? I didn't really feel that overwhelmed because I didn't really feel like there was much of a story. <laughs> it was kind yeah, of just yeah. like uh, kill these aliens kill their boss alien and then there's like other stuff going on but that's nothing to do with you it's not in this time or this place it's somewhere else you have no bearing on it you can watch it if you want or you can just run past it yeah yeah and that was my thing with the story it was it is an extreme case of like tell not show which for the interactive medium of video mm. games like i remember i can't remember which podcast it was maybe the forgotten city where you were saying about you hate audio logs in games yeah. <laughs> and then like the, one of the first things you do in this game is find an audio log and i kind of had a little a little <laughs> moment a little moment of silence for you of what you would be uh going through but not even that like most of the the cut scenes like because when you're telling the story not only are you not playing them it's the step below that you don't even see it in a cut scene you just have a hologram, usually your AI mm. or, you know, the angry mon- monkey man, like the big villain, just talking at you or explaining something that has happened or is happening somewhere else at the moment, but you very rarely get to, like, see or kind of be directly part of any of it. 
Yeah, it kind of felt like you were fighting alongside alongside the timeline. But I don't yeah. I, to be honest, I don't really understand the story. <laughs> like I don't really know what yeah. happened other than clear this ring of as many enemies as you can because it's good if we can come back. So that's yeah. basically what I did. <laughs> like and, and then all of the enemies had really weird names where they were like a description and then a thing. Like yeah. the despondent pyre or like I swear something's called like the adjacent like robot or something <laughs> like one of the boss fights so I was just like who are all these people and like and loads of the things that spoke to you were the little balls yeah like I don't know uh. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't really know what's going on it got to, to it got to the point where the hologram would come up and I would just run because I was like yeah. I don't need to watch this also who set these up yeah I know it's, it, it, it's, it's, it was so and I think the gameplay is like this as well out of all the Halo games it was probably one of the most video gamey video games like even like the villains where they're like I'm so angry and yeah. they do like this like, and then they do like this speech and it's so unlike the way that anyone would actually talk in it, it yeah, it felt really like old school and I don't know if that's intentional or not but it, compared to Halo 1 it felt more old fashioned isn't, isn't there even a line in it where your AI says to you, like, why are they telling you this? And yeah, I was like, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> yeah. It's like in games when they try to cover up when the games are getting repetitive and it's like, oh, you've got to go do this again. And the line goes, oh, gotta, mm. now we're doing this again, are we? Yeah. And it's sort of like, well, yeah, you can't they, like cover up with a cheeky voice line. They did that in this game. They did that in this game. And I was like, oh, come on. It was the bit where Cortana <laughs> or whatever she's called, the AI, goes like, Oh, it looks exactly as you'd expect. Like when you go into a new area, yeah. and it's just more of the like angled metal exactly and the, the blue light. And I was like, "Yeah, else. it is." <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think one of the things with the story is they were in such a hard situation so I played Halo 5 mm. and Halo 5 um, was I had a I think pretty objectively a bad story I think there's moments of gameplay that are okay in it but the story is yeah it, 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 was, it was I won't go into it because it's not what we're talking about today but it was problematic in many ways and pretty much everyone didn't enjoy it but <clears throat> The end of five is Cortana is evil and she's got all of these giant guardians, those big robot things, and she's going to take over the whole universe. And how are you going to beat Cortana? Uh, and which is, you know, sounds like a pretty cool ending mm. to a game. And then you mm -hmm. assume you're going to jump into that. But then they kind of just ignore that and you find out that's all been dealt with. And oh, Cortana's dead. And it's like, oh, well, when did they deal like, with that? What was that? A book or something? Well, so there's a, a bit they or... mentioned when you, was when you first meet Weapon, you know, Cortana 2.0. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as always, spoiler warnings for these. Yeah, um, yeah she, she mentions that, you know, there's the talk about, how, you know, Master Chief says to her that like, oh, you know, we've killed her. Then there's another cutscene later on done through holograms where it says um, Atreus, Atreus, the, the main bad yeah, monkey. Yeah, and yeah. He's not called the, Atreus. That's uh, the little boy uh, from God of War. <laughs> <laughs> He's called like Esherim or something. Or yeah, I, yeah. I can't remember his name. <laughs> it's not Atreus. <laughs> let's just call him atreus for now whatever i'm so bad yeah. today yeah. yeah big bad monkey man um basically like there's a cut scene where they just kind of explain about how he was kind of debating with cortana and then he defeats cortana and then they show the guy and they basically they in a cut scene talking about something that's already happened they basically sum up all of halo 5 and tie that in a right. bow and do a new story and in a way that sucks for a trilogy but also Halo 5 was so bad and no people played it and that story was so flawed in its own way trying to do a direct continuation would have probably been worse for you yeah. because you if they expected you to know it so they they're in a hard situation either way well they've done for the, someone who sorry they've done the thing where they've dropped the number as well as if to be like yeah. this is it you know like God of War did Tomb Raider did Doom yeah so they're kind of starting again but so I didn't miss yeah. any I didn't miss a book or a film or well, so hey, the the banished, which is this new variant. So this is I watch like recap videos, which mm -hmm. is how I know this. <laughs> so they, they they were in Halo Wars two, and they were like the main. Oh yeah, villain, Halo so I'm Wars. Sure, and I'm sure, and I'm sure they might have been in a book or something. So that's where they came from, uh, okay. and I think that's not explained super well. So it's weird where I didn't want them to carry on from Halo five. I kind of like the fact they're starting something new. 
I just didn't really like what they did. I just didn't get involved in any of it or get attached to any of the new yeah. characters or yeah, care yeah. at all. You mean the new <laughs> character, the one guy that's in the game, the one character in the game that isn't <laughs> Master Chief it's, or the AI? <laughs> isn't it so weird? So, do you remember his name? I should have written this down. This is the one time I didn't write down uh, I do. Names. I... No. I remember his code name. Oh, yeah, because you only find out his name at the very end. It's don't Echo you? 216 yeah. was his name. Okay, so Mr. Echo. Because it's so weird because the story seems to be setting up that it was like, oh, it's you and Echo and, you know, your AI stuck on this, like, ring and you're trying to escape. And that's what I thought they were setting up. Then I go there and there's basically a whole town. There's so many Marines and, like, outposts and bases and stuff, <laughs> but, they, but they're never really mentioned. Yeah. And he's like oh, like, I need to get home to my family. And, I, and then I'm like, well, what about all of these other people here? And it's like, it's such a weird shift because it's like, there's some quite dark moments and like, you see Master Chief, I'm just a weapon and a tool and I'm going to get this job done. But he's mm. like, yeah, but I'm a human and I'm scared. Blah, blah, blah. But then you go down and like, the Marines are all like, hoorah! And like, yes. making little jokes and stuff. Yes. Like, actually, I made a note, like, one of the, like, I had a sad cutscene with him and him all being scared. And then I jumped in a warthog and this guy jumped in with me and went, I was too busy kicking ass i forgot to take names and i'm like wait what is the what is the tone like yeah like i 100 percent agree back like back. we'd have these cutscenes with, with uh echo 216 which like that dude just so he just bummed me out like i was like i'm like the terminator <laughs> i'm like a tank like let me live and he's like oh we can't do it like ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. and i'm like i can literally punch an enemy to death like with my bare hands i like, just let let me live but like yeah. then you go and see the grunts and they're like Oh, somebody take a picture and we're beating him. And it's like, is this meant to be funny or is this meant to be like tragic? Whereas like some it's... things do that. They do walk that line really well, but this was not one of them. Like, no, it, it 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 just, it was kind of having, wanting its cake and eating it too a little bit. Yeah. With kind of like, it, it wanted that fun levity. And there's so actually some kind of fun voice line. There's mm. one voice line where it was like um, one of the broadcasts from a grunt where they had just worked out that Master Chief's name is John. All right, and they're yeah. like, Wait, wait! Like this guy, we're all scared of. He's called John. Like this is, this, <laughs> he's, we're all scared of John. Like he's just, just like because it's such a normal name. Like so, the one that was quite funny. But then it tries to do like the emotional stuff and Cortana's yeah. sacrifice and all this stuff. And, it, and it, yeah, it doesn't quite. Which I didn't. Quite, I didn't get uh, on board up. with any of the Cortana stuff. Which like maybe I'm heartless, but like the way I see it is the Cortana is a program. Just delete it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's not. It might appear to be a human, but it's not. So just delete it. Just remove it or uh, make I, a copy of it or whatever you need to I do. I don't quite agree with that just because like, I'd get that if it was like today in our world. But I feel like it's so like in the future, yeah. AIs could advance to a point where there isn't really practically much difference. If, if they mm. reach the same level of intelligence and emotional complexity, like, does it matter that it, you That's know, true. was created by someone else? And it's, and I don't know if you know this, it's based on a real person called Dr. Halsey. It's like, based on a real person's personality, who's the person who kind of created yeah, yeah, Master Chief. Game, so, yeah. so, yeah, so, so there's, I, I feel like if, like, I, I could have cared if it was done better, yeah. but I feel like it was so reliant on, like, the nostalgic factor of this person's voice you've heard a lot from past halo games and they play three characters than... in this game <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and i feel like they rely much on that because if you go back to halo 1 and 2 like they're just chatting about the mission mostly like mm. they're just talking about like go to this objective and stuff there's not like a real like yeah, emotional yeah, connection there, other that. than the the fact that you've been through a lot so yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of retro uh, retroactively adding this kind of relationship between the two yeah because they were like bickering almost like they're in a relationship and <laughs> yeah, it was almost yeah, like oh just... yeah you're not my girlfriend but you are sort of are you sort of are a <laughs> yeah. copy of her but you're not her but I would just yeah, yeah. drag to recycling bin <laughs> done <laughs> 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 Um, right, so we chat about the uh, the gameplay because we haven't even uh, touched on that yet. Uh, yes, yes. I feel bad that you're like totally leading this, but you're definitely the expert when it comes to this game series. I am. Um... Yeah, that's almost why I was kind of setting up at the beginning. Like, so I, I'm, I'm a, you know, I didn't really speak about it. But I played a lot of Halo Three, and then um, yeah, I've played all of the campaigns, you know, up to this. You know, not on repeat you know i'm mainly a multiplayer guy and we will uh, get to multiplayer later but i am definitely you know i'm the one if you're watching the video <laughs> version wearing the t-shirt so <laughs> um, uh, yeah, i hope the so video you're really more. rubbish you're like oh yeah i'm the, I'm the professional in the video you're like looking at the ground and then like looking in the air 
<laughs> spinning around. <laughs> I think I think I know a thing or two about Halo. <laughs> I'm just like I'm just like not shooting my gun at all, just running around <laughs> punching everyone. <laughs> uh, which is kind of an option in this game. So the the big difference between this game and past Halo games for the campaign is it's kind of like can can we just call it open world? Like some yeah, people kind of yeah, seem yeah. to be scared to call it open world, but I just feel like yeah, it's not as big, but it is just open world, right? Mm, yeah, it is. It's kind of like a light version of MGS5 or Far Cry or any of those yeah. kind of games. Like it's kind of like those games without the fluff. Yeah. So like Far Cry, I think it has something where you like rip posters down. It doesn't have anything like that. It's kind of just like just the bases and just the points of interest and nothing extra. And then also the mission, the main missions as well. But yeah, it's open yeah. world. So so like how did you find that? Uh, I mean, it's pretty. I mean, the open world was pretty pointless, wasn't it? <laughs> really? yeah. Okay. I wasn't really. I mean, we actually got a comment about it. Um, where is it? Okay, so this is quite a long comment, so I've already written it. Unfortunately, I've cut it way down. This is from um, Cheese Zero Three Two O. Um, overall, enjoyed it. Thought it was better than Five, which I can't comment on that because I played Five. Uh, like the characters, the boss fights were tough. Didn't love the open world. And while they enjoy taking on fights from different ways, they feel as though a wide mission area would be better, which is what they used to have, right? Yeah. And I... Yeah, I, I've, I've basically got a, a, a note, which is, is, is very similar to that, saying basically that I'd much prefer to have just the main missions, but have them more open so you can have, you know, much of that same freedom, mm. but then not having the kind of busy work checklisty kind of stuff which mm. once again feels very much like old-fashioned video game design the way that like like i was out exploring this world and it was like go do the fobs like go clear out these special baddies go find all these things and i was just like it's all marked on my map just anyway and i'm just kind of going through it all and then i found like there's like this weird ring thing that was kind of in the ground that's the halo um, mate that's the main. Was, that's the main as, bit of the game. That's what it's named as, after. As, it was a smaller ring, a smaller <laughs> ring, like an archway almost. And then, I, and I went to explore it, and I was like, "Oh, there's an interact thing like near it, but there's it's not much my map. This is cool. This feels like much more like what I want out of an open world, mm. which is to explore rather than just you know gaps between gameplay." Um, and then I went up to it and I clicked on it, and it just popped up to a tutorial window, explained what it is, what it does, that there's a bunch of them, and I need to find them all. And I'm like, "Oh, come on, like give me a little oh bit of God. like." So what was it then? Mystery Story. I can't. I can't remember. It was, <laughs> I, I had to collect them all. It was so, something to do with like the story or, or something. But right. the fact that I was like, oh, there's one thing that they haven't explained, and I actually like, I've come across this thing by myself from exploring. Yeah. And then the fact I clicked on it and literally popped up a tutorial window, and like, I realized that I think we both aren't like those types of games don't really appeal to us. Like mm -hmm. that kind of sort of like you know. Ubisoft kind of is one of the mo biggest example. Watchdog, um, Assassin's Creed, those, yeah, yeah. those sort of checklist games. I think kind of you know we're we're not really into. So these aren't necessarily problems, but I think it it did kind of kill the pacing of the game to me. And I feel like I didn't get the benefits. I didn't get the fun of exploring. Like I don't hate all open world games. Like Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games, but I feel like Breath of the Wild, the genre is open world. It doesn't work unless it's open world because yeah. that is what makes it good. And every part of it's been fought out of the fact that it's open world. And this doesn't feel like that. Like I, I had to go to do one of those fob bases um, and I went up to it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this like a trailer. I thought I'm gonna like <laughs> like climb up, get a good vantage point. I'd had a sniper and I yeah. zoomed in, and then that the base was completely empty. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I went down to it, and then all the enemies started spawning in. Oh, I was like, oh, it hasn't man, even it hasn't yeah. even got the benefit of the fact that it is open world. Yeah. Like it. Well, and, I and then I, I, was, um, I did the same thing where I was like, I'm gonna creep around the edge of a base and kind of take note of what's there. But what I learned quite early on is that if you throw uh, what are they called like a Tesla coil or whatever they call it? a fusion coil. Uh, fusion, yeah. That doesn't count as alerting them because it's not a gunshot. So you can literally just lob fusion coils <laughs> and take out as many of them as you want, and they'll all just carry on walking around like as if nothing's happening. And then you can run yeah. in and like finish the job. Um, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. How revolutionary? How underrated? How overrated? Do you think the grappling hook is? 
So I think that the grappling, I mean, it's the best part of the game, yeah. right? <laughs> like, it, especially uh, the campaign. It's the, like, so I, I was collecting all of the, the points to upgrade. I just fully did grapple hook, then did shield, and then just didn't bother <laughs> with mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. else. And, you know, I just, yeah, it's quicker than using vehicles because of the way it's all hilly and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was great. And I, I like, I literally, even in like the indoor corridor areas, I spider man my way through all of it and I enjoyed it. But I think it's so effective and the cooldown so fast, it was a, probably a bit overpowered. There's yeah. a lot of times when I got so fatigued by the combat because I was doing it in all of these side mission stuff. And then there's all just random enemies around the world as well, which I just didn't shoot at once because why would I ever <laughs> bother? You know, just go past it. Like, why yeah, would you ever yeah. start? Like, why have they even bothered spawning them in? And so then there was sometimes it was like, go press this button to open a door and go back and do it. And I, I this, these doors opened and there's like these two hunters came out, which are like, yeah. you know, the really yeah, yeah, giant yeah. ones with the shields and stuff and all these other enemies. So I just grapple shot over them, pressed the bu- button, like grapple shot it all past them and then like went through the door. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, I can't even be bothered to fight these enemies because I just don't, I don't need to. You, like, don't, gain unless it's one- you don't gain anything from that transaction. Like you'll fight the enemies no. or you, all that happens is you lose ammo. Yeah. That's the only thing that you come out of it because your health regenerates as well. You don't even lose health. You just, yeah, it, you're literally like, I'm going to pour ammo into this fight and that's it. Yeah, it, it became a <laughs> chore rather than a, an obstacle, some of the the combat, mm. um, you know, where I just, I ended up just not wanting to do it. Unless it got to the point where it's like, you can't press this button because there's enemies nearby and then I'd have to hunt them down. And I think because it was open world as well, like some of the areas you'd go through are so vast but they would still have the limit to the amount of enemies that they can have on screen. So they would all be really spread out over this like area. And I spent so long just like hunting for enemies. I would always be like, oh, there's one more grunt there. Yeah. I've got to run over. Oh, there's another grunt. I'm just like, and then eventually they, when there's down enough, they might put little arrows on their head so you can find them. It was never like a, yeah, yeah, but it was never like an obstacle to get part. It was always like something I'm just trying to, trying to get through because there's all these, these fun ways to, to kill them. And sometimes I'd do it kind of playing around but usually the most effective way is shoot them with a plasma gun, switch to like a pistol or a BR, shoot them once in the head, yeah. and then you can. And then and that was so effective. Or use the range like the AI wouldn't handle it if you're too far away. Like I had yeah. this fight. There's this bit where it's like the two Spartan killers. Like do you remember that mm-hmm, the fight? Mm-hmm. Those two brutes. And the first time I went in and I was grappling up and I was throwing boxes and doing all of this stuff, and then one killed me, hit me with a hammer, and I died one hit. So the next time I just went up into a roof and just put all of my ammo from my BR in him and he was just kind of going back and forth and just like yeah. killed him. And I was like, well, I should just do that the whole so time, I, right? So that was the part of the game that I struggled the most on because I was trying to do what you just said. Like I was trying to swing around, find ammo, blah, 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 do all this other stuff. And then the way I actually finished it was I jumped in a ghost, parked it in a tunnel and waited for them to run through the front of the tunnel and just shot them down as they ran in. And yeah. I was literally like, I can't believe that was the way that... I did this, yeah. but one thing that I did actually really appreciate about the gameplay, I don't know if it was just me because maybe I'm doing it wrong or something, but I always found that I was always picking up guns and because the ammo, the limit of ammo you can carry is so small, I would like run out and then have to pick up another gun. So it's kind of like Breath of the Wild and that you know how the weapons break? So you're always <laughs> changing weapons. So I found that in Halo yeah. Infinite, I was constantly picking up new weapons and using new weapons the whole time. I wasn't just using, because I'd try and use the Commando as much as I could because it was my favorite gun. But, like, the aliens don't have ammo for your guns, so they would run out, and then I would end up with, like, a Needler, and then a Mangler, which was great. That was a great gun. I love that. Was it the Mangler or the yeah. Wrangler? Uh, anyway, it was it was cool. Um, yeah, the one that, like, shoots electricity, that one was great. Like, oh, I was constantly... Rifle, yeah. Yeah, I was constantly changing up, like, and thinking, yeah. like, okay, what do I need to do? What can I do with this weapon in this situation? The only thing that's annoying <laughs> about the weapons, though, is that sometimes I go to grapple and I pull a weapon back and be like, yeah. I need to get out of it. Like, and then I'm like, yeah. oh, great. <laughs> that's funny. So what you're saying, like, I agree with you, but in every Halo game apart from this one. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> okay. that, was, that was always the thing with Halo is um, apart from Halo 1, where they would give you too much ammo, but yeah. since 2 onwards... Um, that would happen. Like you'd go into an alien spaceship and I'd brought my shotgun and a battle rifle, which mm-hmm. I like. 
And then I'd know that, oh, I'm not going to get any ammo for this because it's like alien stuff. And so it'd be quite precious, but then I'd run out and I'd be like, okay, I'll have to use a needler or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this one had those ammo boxes thing where you could just completely refill your ammo like constantly. And they were everywhere. So this is this was the one game where I kind of felt like I got the two guns I wanted mm-hmm. and was basically able to keep them for five hours because there's those ammo boxes everywhere. Yeah. Well, there's two, two things I'd say about that. One is that you're probably a lot better than me. So you probably are. And don't forget, you've probably got better as the games have gone on. So you, that might not be the case for you. You probably don't use as much yeah, ammo maybe. as I do. But also, which is completely my fault, the human ammo box, the icon looks like a needler. So okay. I was like, oh, I don't have a needler. I just run past it because I'm like, I can't fit up. Oh. And then only when it was later on and I actually ran up to one and I was like, oh, that's meant to be a bullet going through a wall. <laughs> Not a yeah. needler, but to be honest, so it's like kinetic and plasma. So yeah, it's yeah. like it, it's not as hard of a split between like human and alien. So yeah, it's, and there was also yeah, hard light and like all these different types. I don't know. I, I I just changed gun whenever I ran out. I didn't bother with. Yeah. Also, yeah, they're not exactly because they take a bit of time to pick up as well. So even if you're in a hurry, you can't really. Yeah, I'd, I'd normally better like because especially with the grapple, and you move around so quick. I'd kind of remember where one is and and be able. To, you know, the, the one ex- exception is when you get like the the more powerful guns, the special like ver- variants, and you can't mm. refill their ammo. So they'd feel, you know, if I knew a big fight was coming up, I'd grab grab one of them. So like, I love what you're describing, but I was able to micromanage enough that I could kind of just keep the guns that, that I wanted, or at least like. If I had to drop it mid-fight, I'd kind of remember where it was. And once I've killed them, I'd pick it up and, you know, refill it. Um, mm. um, yeah, no, that is something that I like. We've gone way ahead of the intro, but we did actually get a message about the intro, um, which was the single player... Oh, this is from uh, Revioz. The single player is the most free you've ever felt playing a Halo game. It says you. So not them. <laughs> They're talking about you. <laughs> You're dropped, the truth, right? Yeah, you're dropped right in after an exciting okay. intro, and the world is your oyster, which is silly fun. Oh, and they've also said on the PC it's not optimized very well, but I don't really know anything about that. Um, what did you think of the big bombastic intro? I liked it. I, I got high, like I was looking forward to this game anyway, mm-hmm. and then after the the intro and that opening cutscene, I was like, yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to like ten hours of this, and then. I, I didn't get that. I got yeah. a lot of wandering through through fields. That op- um, so op- the kind of- opening scene Sorry. is amazing. Like he when he's like fighting them all, and I was like, oh my god, he's losing. Like I thought this guy was meant to be like Superman. Yeah, and then you have to jump out the spaceship as it's like blowing up or something, yeah. shutting down. The only problem was when I had that is I during that big exciting opening, I fell below the objective, and then it auto saved. Oh, really? Oh, like, no. oh no! But lucky because the grappling hook, I managed to like climb up the scenery, <laughs> and the whole thing was like, like "Get out! You gotta run!" You guys like going off, and eventually the explosions just stopped, and I was like, okay. still climbing up. <laughs> the hero, hero of the grappling hook. Every yeah. every time there was a lift, that like I could see that the bit was opening, I never pressed the button. I'd always yeah. grapple up the lift shaft just because yeah. I could. But the main, um, the main thing that I found, which actually I didn't. I mean, we're really taking a dump on this game one after the other here but the other thing i didn't really like was the fact that every mission was either find a power seed or touch Mm. a computer yeah or or shoot a thing shoot an orange thing for slightly too long like why are you wasting this much ammo on me shooting this canister every time you touch the computer the same thing plays of cortana with her or whatever her name is weapon with her hands behind her back she jumps on yeah and then she's like and then she goes and it's like i get it that, that that ended up being part of the story but also you need to have more than one. And the amount of times you watch it, you need to have more yeah. than one. Especially when she gets into an argument with Master Chief. And then she's like, it's all like climactic. And she still does the yeah. same little like yeah. skips onto yeah. the thing. And I was like, what? But Surely then even then her like- voice lines over your head. Like, can I remember we, I was, I played through most of this game with, um, well, all of us game with my partner. And we, we would took turns um, like kind of playing and stuff and we, we literally burst out laughing because it, it was something that we did triggered a voice line which was just so jolly and like okay off we go like, like after that mm-hmm. like scene mm-hmm. of like you were gonna delete me you yeah, know? <laughs> and, it, yeah. and it's another one of those weird like tonal shifts <laughs> I wonder um, what the deal was with like I wonder if they're gonna release more worlds or what the release... Because, like, even... There's so much... Because this game was delayed and everything, there's so much that I don't understand, like, the co-op. Like, are you going to be chained together? Like, you can't possibly all be running around separately. 
like you can't have access to everyone's FOBs. Like I have no idea yeah. what they're going to release. And also like there's only one area, which is the woods. Are they going to release more areas? Like, do you know anything about what's coming out or? No. So, I mean, the co-op was meant to be at launch. Like, it was going to be at launch before the game was delayed a year. Mm. And I, I really do. I, I think that co-op would have really helped this game mm-hmm. because I feel like this would be a great game where, like, you ignore the story, mess around, jump in a car, let's try and do flips and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, as a physics playground, I feel like it would have really um, helped the game. So they I think they the the ending and there's like a legendary ending I looked online which kind of alludes to, to to this story is going to continue and I think they're going to continue it in Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love some more environments. Um there's actually I watched a video game donkey did a video about it and so he he basically said um, there's more variety in like single levels of past Halo games than there is in all of this game, which yeah. is which is so true. And I, I don't mind the idea of it being a more contained story. They don't have to be these huge globe trotting adventures because yeah. sometimes they can kind of get boring in their own way. But I feel like you know, give me at least a snowy area or a desert area. You yeah. know, just give me like a little bit more than those same trees and those metal hallways. Yeah, or like even a coast or a river. Or like yeah. any anything else, please. Yeah. <laughs> anything it's, else to look see- at other than woods or blue corridors. Which- it feels like such a shame because obviously so much has gone into making the fact that it's open world work. Mm-hmm. And I think the fact that it's open world has made it worse. So I just feel like if those resources were put into polishing up a really like great more more linear but still open game like it got to there's that one bit where you're kind of inside it's towards the end and they got like a bunch of like uh unsc equipment and like almost like fake ground inside do you remember the area and you yeah that's my favorite area of enemies. yeah house of reckoning that was yeah so 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 i got to that bit and i was like oh this kind of reminds me a little bit of like titanfall 2 you know when they've got mm-hmm. like they're kind of building like those houses and that fake terrain now then it, it got me thinking about titanfall 2 and that level and like how much better that yeah. is. And I was like, oh, that's probably a bit unfair to compare. And I was like, no, because these are actually kind of similar games with like, the grapple hook and the movement and stuff like. And I just kind of compare that to Titanfall's 2 campaign where every level had its own kind of tone and style and gameplay style. And this would be the level where you get this gun, which and that gun is great combining in this sort of environment. Yeah. And Halo so everything where you can have any gun and any vehicle you can spawn in and so it kind of all just blurs into each other and feels the same and yeah. and, and so i get how some people could like that but it uh, it just felt so less interesting to I, me i think that's a problem of open world though <clears throat> is that a lot of games the only game that i can think of top of my head that's successfully gone from non-open world to open world is zelda um yeah because the same thing happens every time like look at metal gear solid metal gear solid 4 you have like five or six stages. All of them are different. They've all got their own like gimmick, which I know everyone hates that word, but in actuality, it's fun when a game has a gimmick. <laughs> so if you to do different yeah. each level. And then MGS5 is like just open world. You can spend every level. All you need to do is creep around the edge like you do in Halo. Find the core bit that you need to, beeline to that, beeline out, and you can complete every mission the same way. Whereas yeah. like if these things were actually scripted and made by a person, you know, who actually was making this thing rather than it just being like, oh, do make your own story. That, you know, they're so much better. Like Uncharted Lost Legacy and Uncharted 4, the worst parts of those games are the open bits. Whereas yeah. like the on rails bits are so much better. And it's the same for this game. Like the opening acts and the House of Reckoning, which are like the two big linear sections, are by far the best sections of the game. Because they're not yeah. like they're not leaving you with all of these options to do all these things. So I think even towards the end, isn't there a bit where you are supposed to like go down a road to what, and there's like tanks and stuff all fighting? Yeah, and I yeah. just ran down the left hand side because yeah, because yeah. I could. Yeah, I did. I just grappled across yeah. the whole that whole top bit, and there's all, and the music's blaring yeah. and stuff, and that, and I and I I, I didn't kill anything there. There'd be yeah. wraiths <laughs> and stuff, these tanks, and I just skipped through for all of it. We haven't actually mentioned the music. Like I found the music pretty amazing. Yeah, um, it was good. Yeah, I mean the Halo themes are banger, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but but the Halo thing, but then also like the way like it was, it's definitely one of the the heaviest, and I don't mean like heavy metal heaviest, but it was like <laughs> had slower bits, and we were like boom, like it felt more, uh, I guess. Impactful. Wait, it goes like it goes like what? Sorry, it goes like boom. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, it's great. Yeah, I remember that but, one. But, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> the, mu- the music's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to describe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, kind of the you know the the way it worked, but yeah, heavier drums and kind of a slower tempo it really worked. But like sometimes it really wouldn't line up with what was happening. Mm. Like there was a time when like uh, once again me and my partner burst out laughing because I was there. We were moaning about shooting these canisters because we just did one mission. And I think we were unlucky with the side missions we chose where we had to shoot these giant canisters and there was like five of them we had to shoot. And we we're like, oh my god, I can't believe they're gonna make us do five. Yeah. Then we went to another base and it was like shoot five canisters, and then I'd killed all the enemies and I was just shooting the canisters and then the music it was going mental <laughs> it was going it was a boom, 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 and, I'm, and i'm there with like i had like a pistol going bop, 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 yeah, shooting yeah, this canister yeah. and i literally turned to my partner i was like i wish i was playing the level that would fit in with this music right now because <laughs> yeah. the, whatever level is meant to go with this music must be amazing but yeah. it just doesn't line up but i think it's probably one of my favorite soundtracks of any of the halo games and mm. i really like the halo music and i like the little um some of the songs would have the halo theme but like a little motif of it yeah like really yeah. quietly like a building up um and also i really appreciated the like zelda chime when you did a puzzle yeah i can't remember how yeah. it went but i was like oh it's basically just zelda's like yeah <laughs> and, and, and in general i think all of the audio work like the the gun sounds and the reloading and like even like kind of footsteps and other diegetic sounds like i think all of that's great mm. the, i think the voice acting's solid you know if you know a bit uneven but that's more i think down to you know what we spoke earlier about the the writing yeah um what did you think of the map you mean like the in-game map like you look at? Yeah. Oh, I don't really remember it. I only looked at it because it, waypoints, you know, it's objectives. I only looked at it. So basically, first of all, what I was doing is when I was getting waypointed, I then look at the map and see which things were on the way. Can't do that because yeah. I wasn't going to, I was never going to do all of them. But yeah. then by the time I got a Banshee, I was like, well, I'm airborne now. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to fly straight to the objective. <laughs> I'm but evolved. Like, yeah, I remember it. <laughs> It was pretty good. It was nothing, nothing wrong with it, was there? Yes, there was. Okay, so it drove <laughs> yeah, me crazy. Because <laughs> at first I was trying to do like, at first I was trying to do like. Uh, like a decent amount of the side missions i threw that out the window after a while but um, the, the, the thing that drove crazy is the color scene isn't consistent so okay. like if you ha- so there's the blue fobs yeah when you complete them they go blue yeah but the rescue missions are blue when you oh, haven't completed yes. them Yes. And then when you do complete them, they go grey, which is the same colour that the Spartan cores are, or anyway, before you've collected that. So like there's no like there's no glance of like blue yeah. things are left to do when they're done they're red or disappear. There was it was every which way they mix mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like mix match them all and go so I didn't realise there was loads of the Spartan cores that I'd run past, which is what you need to do to upgrade your suit. Probably the only thing that you really kind of want to bother getting unless you're you know playing for fun yeah <laughs> silly concept um <laughs> <laughs> so, but i ran past them because they're all grayed out i assumed that was a thing that i've done but it was like no that's just they're just the color that the other things go when you've done them so i ran yeah. missed those and i had to go back and collect them all and i was so annoyed yeah, like, that, how does that get past qa you yeah, know? now that you mention it i do remember looking at the map icons and being like i don't know which of these are done yeah, like which one of these so FOBs can I tell like are like mine and which ones <laughs> Which one of these FOBs are- <laughs> Yeah <laughs> <laughs> What are you FOBs gonna tell me where to go next? <laughs> did you um did you ever free any of the marine you know the marines that are tied up? Did you ever yeah. free any of them from like really far away? Uh decently far away, yeah. Like I found the ones that I was like sniping to free that <laughs> They'd be like, woo, and then the enemies would just turn around and shoot them and like kill them instantly <laughs> every time. <laughs> See, I'd try and free them first so they would help me, but I think I protected them a bit better. Yeah. I did kill quite a few Marines though. I had a few uh I'd call in like the vehicle to spawn in and they would just stand underneath it and get mm. squished. I've seen a lot of and videos also- online of them jumping underneath you know, they'd jump out the way. But they're actually oh yeah, jumping that's exactly it. what they did. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I had that, and then and then then I was like just messing around. Pretty much the most fun I had with the game, which made me really want co-op, was at the end of the game. It was me and my partner just messing around with them and like going like close to the edge, and then they would like run and then just like run off the edge of the map and just fall <laughs> off. And they'd be like, like like they'd always say weird things. Like you look at them and they'd be like, "Yes, can I help you?" And then just turn yeah. around and like fall off the, the map. Like, you are great. such a sick fob. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. but yeah I, I, if I had co-op I think I'd had a lot more fun yeah. but I, when co-op comes out I'm not going to go back and play it again I think um, I think yeah I'm, I'm done with it but I will I will check out D3 
DLC and hope it's more linear. Mm. Did you, um, after you saw the credits, did you go back and do anything else? No. No, no I, I did that. I did. I killed some Marines for like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't. I They they killed themselves. I just... You just watched. <laughs> manufactured some scenarios <laughs> yeah. where, you know, putting them on the back of the mongoose, parking the mongoose close to the edge, yeah. getting out. <laughs> they already got one way to get out. <laughs> Placing there, my there gun be some... on their heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for the vi- for the video podcast there was this was recorded so you would have seen this audio podcast people this would be your motivation to check out the uh, yeah the video audio podcast. use your imagination joe's rubbing his hands together and he's drooling <laughs> at the idea of killing marines <laughs> are there stroking cats <laughs> yeah. in the front of my warthog <laughs> evil villain <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah anything else you wanted to, to chat about the campaign before we talk about multiplayer um i can tell you the exact point that i was like about enough if you want <laughs> Yeah, go for you it. You know the destroy three anti aircraft guns. Yeah, the third one where I was like, I've done this twice in a row already. Why do I have to do this again? And then yeah. it's just like, could you imagine like making three objectives? Like they could have done one where you had to approach by vehicle. They could have done one that you had to sneak in. They could have done. Yeah, they just did three. Of were, the were you just did you just banshee to them all? Because I just banshee to, to all of them mm-hmm. and just yeah went just did the bare minimum just to get through it. Yeah, but then not- the House of Reckoning, I was like, this is excellent. That whole mission was really good. And then the boss fight um, with the dude in the... He's, like, chained up in the thing. Yeah. And you have to, like, shoot the cores. I know it was a bit old school, but I liked it. So. Yeah, yeah. But the, the final boss was just... It was just a minion boss where, like, you're just shooting all the other people, not them, and I just... The graphics were cool, though. To- like, her shield thing that was, like, the gold yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And I think mm. overall, I, I, I really like the look of the game. I just wish there was more different styles. Like, I, I, I like the art style, and I think it looked impressive you know especially considering that it's you know it's an xbox one game that's been you know Mm. improved you know it's not a you know it wasn't made for current gen consoles and pc so it was you know considering that it's it's, you know it's never going to look as good as you know like a first party sony game or something but i think it's still um it just um it completely bounces off me like space marines spaceships or aliens i was just like oh God, like, I went in with an open mind and tried to. I was just like, I'm gonna have fun here. These, everyone loves these games, but then by the end of it, I was like, I'm so glad it is done. Yeah, which yeah, is no, the, was, that's the exactly first the time I've had that with this podcast where I've been like, I don't want to play it, but I have to get through it to see the end. I almost watched the ending <laughs> on YouTube because I was like, I can't, I don't want to play it anymore. <laughs> and as, maybe you did, and you've been bluffing your whole way. <laughs> Oh, yeah. way through this we'll see what we, when it comes to the list <laughs> <laughs> uh, right then so um, yeah should we talk about multiplayer then mm-hmm. so, we've got a lot um, of comments by the way on multiplayer uh, okay Did, is, there, is there any that would be a good opener or? well I was thinking maybe I would just put them to you and then you can kind of give me your thoughts on them because you'd be better well I guess actually quite a good opener from I love this username he sounds like a robot or they sound like a robot Charles Five seven four one three four nine two uh, <laughs> says that I love that Microsoft have decided to make the multiplayer part of the game free. Not only that, but it also runs well on their Xbox One from 2013, which is quite an achievement in my opinion. Yeah, like how have they? I guess the install base of the Xbox One is so much bigger than the series, yeah. so it's worth them doing it. But like, and 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 it was made for Xbox One. You know, it was. It was only kind of because it got delayed so much that mm. it seems weird that it's out on Xbox One as well. Like it was, you know, almost the way like Cyberpunk was, but that went the other way around where mm. they were making it for the old console, but they just took, you know, was it six or seven years? So now the new ones are out. And so they can, you know, you know, the multiplayer on Series X, you can run at 120 frames per second. And if you consider that, you can do it at 120. Yeah. The fact that, you know, you can do it at 30 or whatever on Xbox One, it kind of seems to make more sense, you know, like for, for why it would work. Do you, do I will you say, think... I, I, oh, sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say also with the performance, we neither of us played on PC, but I have mates that play on PC and it does run awfully. I watched <laughs> the first ever, like, LAN tournament of it and they were playing on PC and the game was constantly crashing at <laughs> their own event and they had to switch them out for Xbox One X's halfway through the tournament oh, because man. it kept crashing. So, Xbox so One that X. isn't... Yeah, they, they probably couldn't get hold of the, the new oh ones. They had, to, they had to switch them out mid-tournament to get it to work. So it, it hasn't been a problem for us. It's worked perfectly. I only had one crash 
the whole way through on on Series X. Yeah, so it's I been had that great. where I fell through the map, but I think that would have happened on any any console. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't want people that have been playing it on PC and us. You know, we want to acknowledge we get it. It's it's not <laughs> great for everyone. We're here for you. you know? yeah. Comment. Reach out. <laughs> We're here. Yeah. We can we can yeah. we can help you. You know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be here saying, "Oh, it runs perfectly." And then someone who's like, you know, my friend, he's got, you know, he's got an older computer, yeah. but I've played plenty of modern games with him, and he basically can't play it. You know, mm. even with really low settings, it just it just doesn't work. So, um, yeah, ho- hopefully that will uh, get improved. Do you think it can stand with, like, graphically with next gen games? Like. Um, in terms of how it looks i think it looks pretty damn good to be honest my brother was like oh it doesn't even look that great and i was like when it first when they first showed you the the guy uh echo 216 i was like my god this looks absolutely amazing yeah i i think the 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 art style goes a long way i think it will um i i think it will age age pretty pretty well like i don't think it's ever going to be like the showpiece game really i mean some of the open world vistas but i think I, th- I think we haven't seen many games that are making the most of current gen console because mm-hmm. most have been split. Like I think if you you know I compare it, compare it to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and like that is just like incredible looking. Yeah, yeah. And that was a game made for PS5. And not only would that not run on PS4, it wouldn't really run on a lot of PCs because it has to be this super fast SSD. So if they released it on PC, they'd have to say, oh, you've got to have this fast SSD to run it. So it's even you know, almost better than a lot of PC games. So I, I feel like it's, you know, it's never going to be that. But mm-hmm. to be a free-to-play multiplayer game, like, they don't want that. They want everyone to be able to play it, you know, rather than it to be, you know, this mind-blowing thing that 10% of, you know, people, you know, rich people can play. Yeah, which they've done, to be fair. Yeah. Anyone can Apart play Apart from it. the PC stuff, yeah. Yeah, but, like, they can play it on xCloud if they want. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Look, if you're that a competitor, you know what? You can play it on xCloud, and if you are so competitive and so good that you can't possibly play it on xCloud, then you should have a computer that can run it. That's my opinion. <laughs> if you're that deep in it and you want to be that good at it, then you can play it on a PC. And if you can't, then play it on xCloud. It's probably fine. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Like a so, hard line. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it just annoys me. Like, I read people online that are complaining about like, like xCloud's pretty good. I've played some yeah. games on xCloud. Like as long as your console's wired, which mine is, it's all right, yeah, well, you know? even on wireless, uh, uh, you know, it's it's certainly playable. Like, there's certain games, you know, that make more sense for it than you know. I wouldn't really mm. want to, you know, I wouldn't want to play Street Fighter on it, probably. No, but you know, <laughs> but like you know, some other games would be would be fine. And the other thing in the, in their comment was the fact that it's it's free to play, which I think is is both good and bad. Like we've kind of joked a bit about like the microtransactions and the cosmetics and how long until they kind of ignore the art style of the game. I mean, they've already added cat ears, you know, like how how long are you wearing? Like until you're wearing like Doritos armor and stuff like that. AI. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then then other, other kind of bigger problems is like, well, not really big problems, but just minor gripes. Like the fact that it's no longer red versus blue because they want everyone to have their cosmetics and mm. that you know means everyone's kind of got an outline on them and I, I'm not a big fan of that and then even things like the fact that they got like they, they need to have like daily and weekly challenges because every free to play has to have you know keep people coming back these challenges but it kind of means that in a multiplayer game someone might have a challenge get five melee kills that game so someone's running around oh, and all they're yeah, trying to do is course, get melee yeah. kills rather than just playing to win and so yeah. like I I'd never have noticed that, but that could have been happening into games and really, or maybe they get the challenge and then they just quit the game because they've already got it and they need to do mm-hmm. something on another map now. And mm-hmm. so, so that there are problems. And then hacking, I guess, as well, especially now it's cross-play with PC. Like free-to-play games always have more hackers and cheaters because they they're less scared about getting banned because <laughs> they've yeah. not put any put any money in. So, yeah. what's there, the there um, what's problems. the monetization like? Do you know? So, um, I've not spent any money. Um, but I know that people were complaining saying the progression seems too slow mm-hmm. um, and Free for Free have acknowledged that and said they're going to kind of speed things up but it's only uh, cosmetics so okay. I don't 
care like i've i've just left myself as default armor i'm never going to change it it's a first person game <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't care i don't care what I don't like and the only annoying thing is at the beginning of every game when it like pans the camera across to show you everyone i'm like i don't care what i look like i could not care yeah, less yeah. what my teammate's armor looks like and i know they're gonna do it because if someone spent 20 quid on hat ears in the game like yeah. they want to <laughs> they want to show it off i guess but, you just reminded you, me because you were saying about it being first person and the fact that <laughs> that characters aren't red and blue anymore i remember when i first started playing halo online my dad gave me what i think he thought was a really good tip (laughs) but he was like if you ever forget what team you're on son just melee and look at the color of your arm (laughs) (laughs) no that so so, and and, and was he pro at the time or was he he's pro now (laughs) he's definitely pro now so (laughs) I guess it was part I just of his love journey. That, yeah, I love that was like a problem enough for him that he, he, would, yeah. have, he, he would need to keep doing that. Um, we got a couple of comments as well about the multiplayer of the content, basically. So Revios again, this is another long one that I cut down. It says the core gameplay has been modernized perfectly, but has about 10% of the content that it should have. And then another comment from Cheese 320 they want more playlists like Infection and SWAT. And the reason I've pulled that out is because I think I read that maybe you know there was something to do with the Slay there was no Slayer game type. Yeah, so so the, these are obviously very like kind of early comments. Like this, this was obviously they released the multiplayer earlier, mm-hmm. early in beta, and they had very limited playlists then. Basically they wanted people to find games quick, so they had less playlists. So ah, they've okay. added SWAT. They've called it Team Tactical in this game, which is like Basically, we have no armor, so you can kill in one headshot. So mm-hmm. they've added that now. They they have a dedicated Team Slayer play, playlist now. Okay. So um, they don't have an infection yet. But what I think they're going to do is keep rolling out kind of those casual modes. So they had Fiesta, where you spawn with a random gun. My guess is like that that's going to go, and then they'll put an in infection, and that's going to go, and then they'll put in like Griff Ball, which is another like fan favorite, mm-hmm. like kind of silly casual mode so i think they're going to cycle those out to have like events or to bring people back so i'm not too stressed about that do you reckon uh, they'll change the name of infection because of covid um because they changed well, they swat changed... right because i guess SWAT yeah, is not yeah. cool anymore so <laughs> as a uh, covid yeah, I'm, sufferer I'm not sure. would are you are you offended by infection <laughs> i mean like <laughs> No, I guess maybe like fatigued from hearing about the word. In fact, like not from me having it. Not, they should call it Team um, Fatigued. <laughs> team Fatigued. It's just a, a hopper where you need to put in your like your like details, and you've got to be over a certain age yeah. and just like it's just like a, a just for jaded old men yeah. like us, just playlists yeah. like Team Fatigued. Okay, it's like, it's we've, just renamed, a bit we've renamed we've uh, renamed infection mode to Heavy Cuff, which we think. <laughs> People will be able to relate to. Yeah. <laughs> Team isolation. You yeah. just gotta avoid yeah. the other players. You just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That'd be great. Yeah. So I, I think that there have been complaints about the amounts of maps and stuff. I wouldn't go as far to say as like there's ten percent of the content that's needed. Mm-hmm. Like there's a decent amount of map, but obviously there's like the big team battle maps and then the smaller maps so if you only play big team battle you might get bored of the three or four maps and if you're only playing the smaller maps but i just don't care about that because this is like a a living game this is going to be continued to be updated so i know in like one year time you know there's going to be an extra Mm -hmm. five or six maps and you know and that, that is from their track record they were very good at supporting halo 5 which had you know way less players so um yeah like things like playlist and those sort of like specific balancing issues and stuff i'm just i'm not stressed about i kind of i trust 343 after halo 5's multiplayer um so i'm not too worried about that okay i just thought it was so funny for team for heavy cough <laughs> like are you on team mucus or team blood <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> lovely anyway i'm gonna give you an open chance here to talk about balance weapon balance okay we've got a comment from it's triple a known as trip to us uh even though I'm sad to see a lot of very fun weapons not return for this game, the gun balance feels better than Halo 4, which I think they said was the last one they played. What do you think about the weapon balance? Oh, I've got to try and remember Halo 4 now. Like, Halo 4 is the one I played the least. Um, like, I think it's way more... Like, Halo 4 had the problem where, like, 
they would that was the one where they were chasing call of duty and like you would have it like if you got a bunch of kills or points you'd call in a drop and it would be like a random weapon you'd get mm-hmm. so i don't think they they were unbalanced by the damage numbers but they they have the maps were kind of quite unbalanced and the guns you know the way you got them wasn't kind of through what you've done and you would you know so it was a kind of unbalanced in a different way i think it's the same level of balance as halo 5 but like it's less like fine tuned. It feels like, especially with the maps, they've tried to like Halo Five. They had great maps, but they all felt like perfected. It felt like there was like they put like a piece of high ground, and they were like, "Oh, it's too strong," so we need to give like three different ways that you could get it, and don't give too much cover. And then like there's oh, this corridor, but oh, this is too much of a long thin mm-hmm. corridor. It's too dangerous. You're going to get grenaded. So we're going to put cover here and a way to drop out here and stuff. And they were all fine tuned, and it made really balanced game. But they all felt a bit like stale and uneven because of it whereas i feel like with halo infinite they're 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 not unbalanced but there are power positions like if you think of that live fire level you know the one with like kind of like the mannequins it's kind of like the test ground one yeah yeah it's one of the ones you get a lot like it's got that tower which is like an obvious power position where you can see over a lot of the map and there's only really two ways to get to it one you've got to mantle up which is dangerous and the other is a long walkway and it's it's a power position which is really strong to hold but you can it's not impossible to take it over and i felt like that was something they were scared to do with with halo 4 and 5 where they were so scared to have like a a certain gun or position too strong they kind of balanced it perfectly whereas the old halo games there's a bunch of i think worse design that made some great maps just because people you know especially for more casual players it kind of just ended up being fun it was fun that there was this giant long sight line that you could snipe down sure it's annoying when you're getting sniped and you don't have the sniper but it's great when you have the sniper and you want to be the one to get it and try and flank around and kill them so i feel like it's um it's 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 maybe slightly less balanced but more fun because of it it's almost like what you want to do i say this as someone who's never designed a video game in their life you sort of want to balance it around 99% of your player base. And if the 1% can do something like, you know, a long sight line with a sniper rifle and they can get loads of kills, like it's not the end of the world. So like yeah. if you if you can get into the overpower position and you are the 1%, then good for you. Yeah. You're not going to be in every game. You're not going to be against every player. Like, and, and, and they can trust in their matchmaking that the great players are going to go up against the great players mm-hmm. and the casual players are going to go up against the casual players. But I think this is also one of the best games where like the competitive side and then the casual side I feel more similar than the similar than they've ever been. Like Halo Three, you know, which is probably one of my favorite Halo games. Mm-hmm. The competitive side, you know, especially if you look at like top competitive, like like the hardcore playlists or like the pros, it's basically just battle rifles and like. It's like some maps would have a sniper or a rocket no, none of the other equipment was in the game like no vehicles no like um like needlers or kind of weapons like that it's basically mainly just battle rifles yeah and like pure maps symmetrical maps you know whereas in this game like the competitive game they're using grapple hooks they're using like the sword they're using like all, like the, there's not much that hasn't made it across to the competitive or like the ranked playlist that is in the normal game it's just you know they've limited you know rockets you only get two rockets now rather than four you yeah. know the grapples you might get slightly less grapples there's, there's a few changes like that you spawn with the battle rifle rather than the assault rifle so they've they've made a few slight changes but the gameplay really isn't that difference between casual and competitive, which I think is great because it, it makes it more fun to play ranked because you get kind of the fun stuff. Yeah. But, you know, the the grapple hook is balanced for a casual player who's just going to like, you know, grapple towards a vehicle and hijack it. And that was the best thing in the world. But then a pro player is using it to do inventive routes to run the flag where they're going to grapple up somewhere, turn around and grapple the flag towards them and kind of, you know, rather than running to get overshield, they run to get the grapple, then they grapple yeah. the overshield to them. You know, these these smart plays but it's it's still balanced even if it is kind of like a a more silly mechanic and i think that's great can you do all that yeah i didn't know that (laughs) it's true you can grapple because you know you can grapple weapons and stuff so you can grapple equipment to you and yeah and 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 then the the way the movement was the way you can kind of like fling yourself around and stuff when you see the really good players it's um it's really entertaining to watch you know as well as uh, as well as playing um it's just you just reminded me there's something we didn't mention at all in the single player which was yeah. like you have something other than the grapple hook. You have those four. Oh, I, did, yeah. I didn't use them once. Did you? 
<laughs> so the, the only one I used was the one that you kind of shoot to the ground and it would like scan out to mm-hmm. show where enemies are. I did that when there was the invisible elites. I, <laughs> I should have done that. I, I, did you not? <laughs> I didn't know how to select it in the heat of battle. I was and like, the, it's so every confusing. Time I forgot. <laughs> every time I'd be like, oh, they're here. And I'd be like switching between my grenades and pinging things. And so Master Chief's like, like, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> All to quit looking for his, getting his little p- bag out, his little pouch looking yeah. for his stuff. Yeah, every time I'd never, I use it so little, yeah. I'd never remember how to to switch it. Yeah. Um. Well, my main problem with the multiplayer of Halo, so I'm not really into first person shooters anyway. But the one thing I always remember about Halo, and I think rings true for this game, is that it's just a grenade fest. Like there is grenades everywhere. Like you cannot step without stepping on a, like a grenade and picking it up. So, especially the level that I'm at, which is very, very low, like level one or two or something, like, as soon as there's a gunfight, the doorway is just, like, everyone on both teams is just lobbing grenades through. Yeah. And that's remained through every Halo game I think I've ever played. <laughs> that's still the case. Yeah. And the other thing was, when I when we first played, we had that map, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a capture the flag, there's two, there's a... One one team defends a flag, one team attacks a flag, and you can drive a ghost uh, launch or launch site. Okay, yeah, yeah. And when we first played it, it was a nil nil tie, and that was when the game first came out. And then we played it again last night, and it was a nil nil tie again. And it's like has no one figured out how to win this game type, or like has it not been rebalanced, or like because there's yeah. about a month between those two. And that's yeah, that's, no, that's, I, that's, I, that's I, what I, I have to agree say. With you. <laughs> Yeah, no, for that map, definitely. Yeah. Like, And I think that, I mean, well, for one, I don't like that map for 4v4. I think it's mm-hmm. too, even with the focused objective, everyone running to the same place, I still think it, it should be at least um, 6v6. Uh, and I, I think it's just, it leans, basically the problem, problem with that is it leans too much in the defender's advantage, which means that, every, you know, it's more likely that they're not going to get the flag, which means mm-hmm. it's a tie. And there's a few problems like I have, which almost seem more like matchmaking problems. Like like the fact that they added the Fiesta mode, which is the mode where you switch between all your different guns randomly, um, where you spawn with different guns randomly. But then they did it as like a 4v4 playlist. And if I'm going to play that mode, it's just for silly fun shooting stuff. And it's weird spawning in. I'm like, oh, I've just got a bunch of teammates around me. Like, why yeah. are they there? Like, it should be a free for all. So there's, there's stuff like that. But I, that's the stuff I'm less worried about even though I do hate that is the one map I actively don't like because I just know that that's the stuff they can kind of update and change in time. Mm. In terms of the grenades, I I, I get what you're saying. And we, you, you were talking about liking King of the Hill and I was saying I don't like King of the Hill because of all the grenades, mm-hmm. because of that mode. But I think once you have played more and you learn that like, oh, we're in this gunfight, I'm going to back off. You just kind of know like, okay, I know I'm not going to push here because I know the grenades are coming. Or if you are good with grenades you can kind of bait you know like you can get into scenarios where you're shooting someone and they kind of outshoot you so you're a bit weaker and you duck behind cover and then i wait for half a second and then i poke out because i know they're going to be throwing a grenade yeah and i can catch them throw a grenade and kill them so i i think once you kind of get better with them and learn how to predict them it's such a useful tool and one of the major difference makers between like a good and a very good player that I feel like it's so crucial to the game that even though sometimes it can get a bit annoying with how many that there are yeah um I I, I think there's not a downside also uh, in this game it's way more easier to shoot them out the air than the old games to like, you know you could do blow that. them up mid-air yeah yeah and it, it's much more of a viable option and then you've got the Oh, I can't remember what it's called. The the repulsor, the things you can knock them back yeah, yeah. as well now. Yeah. Like so it feels like there's more options to deal with it, or even the other shield that you can kind of put down. So um yeah, I, mm. I understand your complaint, but I think if you played it more, then, then maybe, I'd just um, go over you, it, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you you'd kind of learn that oh yeah, I just shouldn't be if I'm getting grenaded this much, I'm kind of being in the obvious places. I guess and the analogue that I would understand is that if anyone here plays fighting games, anyone watching plays fighting games, when you get to the stage when someone's throwing firewalls all the time, it's no longer a problem because you're like, yeah. well, I know exactly how to get around that because yeah, people constantly do it. So I guess it would be the same thing with the grenades. But one thing that I always remember, which is when I used to play TF2, uh, Team Fortress 2, it came with developer commentary. And one of the things they said that really stuck out, stuck out to me was that they were like, when we removed the grenades, the game got so much more interesting. Yeah. So I always remember that. And then I go to Halo and I'm like, I've got eight grenades. Like, <laughs> I'm literally yeah. just lobbing them like for a door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I feel like once you get to the point where, like, I know someone's coming here and you tie, because the grenades are so interesting in Halo because you can't, like, 
cock them like you can in like Call of Duty or something. Like it's they blow up like you know about half a second after they hit a surface mm-hmm. so you can use them across map or you can do like the clever bounce where you kind of bounce it at the top of a staircase so it goes down slightly and once you kind of really work to get it so you're it's blowing up at the right time in the right place and there's things called they call like insta explodes where if you have as a plasma grenade mm-hmm. you throw one on the floor then if you throw the other one that sets off the first one and it kind of okay. launches it really fast but it blows up straight away yeah yeah because that's hit like the surface a, right so yeah, well, it's just the first grenade sets the other one to blow up, blow up, but also shoot out really quick, but only like a meter or so ahead. So that's a great way if like th- there's a doorway, you know, someone's going to push you. That's almost like a guaranteed kill. So once you kind of start doing that kind of stuff, it gets entertaining. But I do get why why they could be um, could be annoying. What, what do you think? Do you, I don't really know about the Halo community, but would is it normal for players to go back a game? Would you ever go back to four or five or three or? Um, I I think when they released they released the Master Chief collection, which was a collection of you know, Halo one, two, mm-hmm. three, um, and then eventually Reach they they added into it. So when they released that, and then like I could play like Halo three and four K at sixty FPS, and you know, and like I played a lot of Halo three, and then um, uh, Halo two anniversary as well. I really enjoyed, so I played at that then. But I I don't think there's many. I think apart from Master Chief Collection, I don't think I don't think I think this has killed Halo Five okay. and Halo Four. Was so that's not dead. like a regular thing to be like because like again with Street Fighter, it's like oh I you know which one do you play? And it's like oh, I play two, three, you know. Yeah, you don't necessarily jump to the newest version. So with Halo, is everyone going to jump to Infinite? Yeah, well, it's it's weird because Halo when Halo Reach came out, a lot of people stayed with Halo Three because Halo Reach had its problems, mm-hmm. and then. Halo 4 was kind of the same. So when Halo 4 came out, it was all all over the place. And then I feel like Halo 5, the multiplayer was good enough that for people that was, you know, not just after nostalgia and wanted to play new Halo, most people gravitated to that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's not many people that are, are kind of preferring Halo 5 over uh, Infinite. So I feel like this is just what... Every, is people are going to play Infinite and people are going to play like... Halo 1, 2, and 3 in Master Chief Collection. <laughs> right, so <laughs> this know. is actually Halo 7. Uh, yeah, I guess so there's Reach <laughs> as well. <laughs> and then Wow. They've made some yeah. of those. Although I guess it's like 20 years old now, right? Or 25? 20. Yeah, no, 20. 20 yeah, 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 yeah. It was the 20-year 20, 20 anniversary, wasn't it? Mm. Um, this year. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Do you know Jonathan Ross has in, been in quite a few of those Halo games? <laughs> yeah, he was in Halo 3 to some of the voice lines. There's yeah. a, a skull you can turn on, which makes them say the rarer voice lines more, and you'd hear them all the time. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's, it's just quite funny. Do you know, I was in, I'm, I'm in, in Halo 5. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. I told you? Isn't Halo 5 yeah. the worst one? Yeah, I'm in the campaign of Halo 5. Yeah. Which is, uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I'm only like background marine voices. I've never heard it myself. But what do you I set off the What's voice the line? lines. Uh, like, like there's ones like saying like, "Oh, I've been hit," like stuff like that. There's like about, about three lines. Can you give us like a? Can you do it like you like, did in the game? Uh, oh, I could probably try and find the original. No, I don't want like, the original. Oh, I want not. this. I want today's version. I was like, "Oh, I've been hit." <laughs> <laughs> Great. Gave a few, few, Great. Few, few different takes. Of, of, I don't of think that. after us absolute dressing down of Halo Infinite, I don't think they're going to be asking you back. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> no, well, this, this is the thing. I love the multiplayer, and this is what when we put it on the list is going to be the thing. Is like this multiplayer could come out by itself, and you know, forget the camp. I mean, I pretty prefer. You know, I probably <laughs> overall feel more positive. I love the multiplayer so much. I don't know if that's if that's come across because we've been very in the weeds talking about balancing and stuff but i've just been having an absolute blast with it and especially when i've been playing with like a group of people and we're like like we you know we were playing this last night mm-hmm. and when, you know and it's like you know you grab the oddball i got the sword i defend you and like we're pinging and calling out and stuff like i love like what i love in in multiplayer shooters is when like like game sense you can heard the term game sense yeah, is yeah, rewarded yeah. where where you're keeping track like not consciously of oh, they've died there and their teammates here, they're probably going to spawn there. I know that they're, oh, that's just guns being picked up. So they're going to have that there. And you'll keep, and because of that, you're beating people easily that might have better aim than you because you're keeping track of everything. And, you know, Overwatch is another extreme example of that, which is mm. why I like Overwatch because they're keeping God, track of Overwatch. ultimates and stuff. And then, you know, pretty my favorite shooter of the last few years, Quake Champions, the one I've played the most, is all that. It's all about 
timing, literally timing in your head, counting when these items are spawning and where, and that's just a 1v1. So mm. they're always the games that I like. And the thing I like about Halo is it's not all about aim and it's not all about, you know, speed because it's, you know, it's not a particularly fast-paced game. It's it's mainly about positioning and outsmarting your opponent to, to mm-hmm. win. And the, the grenades and the melee is a huge part of that, um, which is why I kind of, I really like that sandbox. And I think this is... Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is the best Halo multiplayer. Like, I'm not going to have as much fun in it as I did Halo 3 back in the day, just yeah. because that was like, you know, golden days of my life, you know. Yeah. But in terms <laughs> yeah. of a, as good of a game, I, I think this, I think it's incredible. Um, and it's so jarringly different from the campaign in terms of how well it's designed. And even yeah. like the map variety, all the, like, like all the, the cool looking levels and stuff. Like, where's some, I want to go to those locations in the campaign. Yeah, man. Like, I remember <laughs> seeing, I know we're talking about the story again, but just quickly someone was like do you remember in halo two or three there's that level where you go inside the scarab tank and blow mm-hmm. it up from the inside like what is the equivalent yeah. in halo infinite i know there's, there's, no there a, there's no yeah. moments there's no moments there's no moments i was thinking that as well for like because like you go to those fob bases they're like forward operating bases for those mm. who don't know why we keep saying fob <laughs> um and like you can spawn in all your like any gun basically any vehicle and stuff and i think back to halo 3 when it was such a moment when you get the warthog because there's, there's a bit where you see the warthog in the distance and as you walk towards it a grenade comes out of nowhere and it gets blown up and you think you think that was the warthog <laughs> yeah. level but then it gets destroyed in front of your eyes and it's not until a few levels later where you yeah. get there's like a room full of warthogs and all these marines and you can go off in it and i'm like where's like that where's like that in game not even storytelling like moments that they've created yeah. there's just there's like there's basically just none of that in it yeah you're 100 right um well i'm glad you mate, got to say that you like the multiplayer because i know that you like it and i was I yeah, really I, I really like it. There, there are a few the other <laughs> little niggles that I've I've written down, but they're pretty not worth going into because we've spoke for a long time here. So, well, um, I think in terms of the multiplayer and where I'm standing is that I'll play it if you're playing it and you want to hang out. Yeah, but I, I think that's you just acknowledging it's not your kind of game, rather yeah, than yeah, you thinking yeah. it's not because oh, because of oh, you know, I don't like the pistol. You know, it's just yeah, because yeah. of, um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's because it's less your kind of game. Well, they did, is, they did fix mine. one complaint I've had about Halo this whole, all these years is that when I used to play multiplayer, no one ever made a sound and there was no music. So it was always like, yeah. well, when you took note of that, it got really creepy. Like you were just complete silence, like gunshots, no one screaming in pain, nothing, and then no music. And it was just like a bit weirdly yeah. atmospheric. And now it's got like, sounds and voices you got your little and, ai yeah. guy making jokes and stuff yeah and also well. the you fact can... that your characters call out stuff is super handy yeah what well, one of actually i will mention with the smaller complaints is because i always generally play halo more casually than other shooters whereas so i normally i don't want to have a headset on or whatever i mm. want to just be chilling playing it but they've really so you have got your motion sensor you know where mm-hmm. if people move it comes up as a red dot um so in this, the range of it is really small compared to past Halo games. So people only show up when they're very, very close. But they've made it so their footsteps are much louder than they used to be in past Halo games. So I found myself, I'm getting surprised by players a lot more. Like, you know, I'm getting hit in the back or like, oh, there's mm-hmm. someone here now. Because I think I've got a, a false sense of security because of the motion track. And so now I found myself, even when playing more casually, but I'm, I'm like, oh, I probably should put a headset on because I'm just going to get annoyed otherwise. <laughs> yeah. It feels like they, they kind of make you require that more than the past yeah. games. And yeah. I feel like... Because there's no motion sensor at all on ranked. So I'm like, oh, why right. don't they just make it wider on casual be, and just let people, you know, at least be facing each other when they're fighting? <laughs> yeah, because I use the motion tracker all the time, constantly. Yeah, but have you have you found that you're getting it's not as effective in this I game? I just thought it was you? rubbish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm going to be completely honest. Everyone watching, listening, I go, like, minus five, minus six every game. Like, I'm not good at this game at all i'm a horrible aim i don't know where any of the spawn points are they're like oh so and so spawning in three seconds and i'm like it just means i mean i understand that i'm the problem and i could learn <laughs> but i don't know so i'm just like i'm, I'm here yeah. doing my best i call well, out I, when I, I, see I feel it. like you you could be good you just haven't played it loads you know yeah. that, that's all it is you know it's like, yeah 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 you, you know you, you could end up like you are at overwatch or something you know you just <gasps> if you if you play it more oh, i think i'm good at overwatch <laughs> Yeah, I think you're pretty oh, good. Thanks. Okay, I'm happy with that. <laughs> uh, right, do you want to? Should we put it on the list? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I'm really happy that you weren't like 
super into the game. I was worried I was just going to be like bumming the whole thing out by being like, it's actually quite boring. <laughs> <laughs> but like everyone I've spoken to has said it's like. You know. So I'd heard like from some of the reviews I heard and people on podcasts, most people I'd heard talking about it were really positive about it. Um, yeah. So I, I, I had quite high hopes and as the opening was so good. I, but I, di- I didn't think you would really like it. I, just, I yeah. feel like I know your your game sense enough for like what you like, and I feel I, I was pretty sure the stuff that I didn't like you wouldn't like as yeah. well. So, but the I other thing confident. was like what I asked you about the grappling hook is because I was listening to a podcast and they were like doing the best things of the year, and they were like the Halo grappling hook is the best thing. And it's like it's not even original. Like loads yeah. of games have had grappling hooks. Like outside your office, you have a portal gun and a gravity gun. Like, they're amazing. They are revolutionary. Yeah. Grafted Hook is, like, not anywhere yeah. near as good as that, is it? Yeah, I mean, I, was, I compared, like, you know, said Titanfall 2, and so, you know, like, there's, yeah. it's, it isn't a lot of game. But I think it improves Halo so much. And I think the way... I think the way it interacts with like picking up guns and items and like the way and like the fact that it fits so naturally in the sandbox of like grappling to a vehicle to then hijack it. You know, I had a moment in the campaign where like I I was in a banshee that was getting destroyed and I dropped out of it midair, grappled to the enemy banshee and then hijacked that and then yeah. like the elite fell. I I I feel like that's what's so great rather than like the actual f- way them it's the way the mechanic fits into the game rather than how good the mechanic is yeah. i think well, which what makes it so i great. think i would have revolutionized halo by making a likable main character but that's <laughs> <Yeah>. just me <laughs> rather than just we'll be fine we'll, we'll do the job we'll get it done <laughs> And then, what is it? it's because i'm projecting my own personality onto it i'm like my per- my personality is nothing like a super soldier yeah, <laughs> i would yeah. i would not deal with this circumstance you're like my favorite part was a master chief went wee while he was grappling yeah. <laughs> my favorite part was chief was killing all the marines because he's a yeah. psychopath yeah. <laughs> right uh, i'm ready I've got the okay list. so i'm ready yeah do you want to uh read out the list as it is just for audio listeners okay so in number three we have onimusha warlords in number two, we have Forgotten City, and in number one, we have Disco Elysium. Okay, which... so I, I I released a short, what we both did, of our top tens of the year, where yeah. I believe Halo Infinite didn't feature on your top ten, did it? <laughs> no. but, I didn't think it, it featured on yours either until I watched it again. <laughs> it, it did, but so it's kind of a bit spoilers for what I think. Uh, so, yeah. But, but what, what, what do you think? Are we going to have to argue here? or are uh, we in I would... I basically think as long as it doesn't go, it can be three or four. So it can be bottom or It can't be two. Bottom. No. Like, the amount of fun I had with Forgotten City and, like, the banter and, like, met, talking about it, like, that was such a fun game. And, like, Halo Infinite was just a slog. It was such yeah. a slog. But so the thing is, like, if it was the, the campaign... I'd say, like, let's slot it on 10 just to make room for the other games we're going to put in between. <laughs> you know, like, I would be yeah. absolutely in agreement. Like, Halo campaign, like, you know, I, it, it would be way... Like, I just, you know, I for a lot of it, I just didn't enjoy I wish I wasn't playing it, you know? Like, yeah. it sounds harsh, but, you know, that's the truth. But I love the multiplayer so much, and I know I'm going to be playing the multiplayer for years and years to come. Yeah. and you know, Mate, that's, Halo- why I'm, that's why I'm giving you three. That's Otherwise, why, I'd that's put why it I'm getting... Bottom. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, I'd put it in flat four. There's no, there's no reason for me to ever go back to this game. Like the, <laughs> the single player was horrible, and I just the multiplayer is not my thing at all. Like it's yeah. easily. So I'm giving you on a mission. I'm sacrificing on a mission for you. Oh, so you gentleman. can have it, not at the bottom. Yeah. Also, don't forget, just because it's in fourth or third doesn't mean it's going to be the bottom forever. Yeah, I know. I get, I, I get it. I get it. You don't have to. <laughs> you understand how a list works. You just, you're, you don't have to mansplain to me, yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, the thi- actually, a list, it's not always permanent. But... <laughs> <laughs> I did come up with this format, Ollie. I get the way, I get the way it works. But so I think, I mean, it's hard because it's so much down to preference rather than like. Like, no, like I'm not going to argue down the quality of the Forgotten City, and I don't think you're going to argue down the quality of Halo's multiplayer, which is basically the part of the game that I'm caring mm. about to put on the Yeah, but that's the 50% list. of the game, mate. You didn't like half the game. Yeah, but like that's that's fine. I mean, what you know what? I didn't I didn't buy the campaign. I only got 
got it through Game Pass. I only care about the multiplayer. Like, I get it. It's like, it's a shame I didn't also get a good campaign, but that's literally just not factoring into this. Or like, I'm just putting the multiplayer on here. Yeah, but we have to get it for... Some of its parts is important. You can't be like, oh, I watched this film and the... The first, the first half was really good, so it's a ten out of ten. So no, because that's in one piece. Like for for us, we had to play the campaign because we committed to do it for the podcast. Yeah. Someone, and I think a lot of people have done this, are just playing the multiplayer and have no interest in the campaign. They've just downloaded it for free and they're just playing the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to do the campaign, or you could start the campaign, realize what it is, and stop playing. So I feel like it's such a separate experience than the multiplayer that I feel like you shouldn't take it down because of the campaign, apart from the fact that, oh, it could have been boosted higher if the campaign was also good. Yeah, um, but 50% of this vote is mine, and I would put the story at the bottom and the multiplayer at the bottom. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, and, you're only, and you don't even want... You know, so we'd say we're doing 25% each, right? Story, multiplayer, both of us. I'm saying the story and the multiplayer at the bottom. You're like, story at the bottom, but the multiplayer's pretty good. You're literally giving it 25% of the vote. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Does my my passion for how much I like the multiplayer, does that weigh anything for you? Like, I re- mean, even from us playing yesterday, like, could you tell how much fun I was having? Like, <laughs> I really like it. Like, it does... Because I feel like that's what it's going to come down to. There's going to be a lot of cases where it's just preference, and I feel yeah, like but I the think way to decide that is from passion... If I said to someone like, oh yeah, I, I uh, co-host a podcast where we put down a list of our favourite games and Halo is second, they'd be like, what? <laughs> you don't yeah. like that game. It yeah, needs but, to be third. It, but it, it I, but be I third. Will, I, I'm so sure in like three years time, I'll still be playing it and then they're going to be like... And I'm, I'm sure I won't be. So yeah. I guess it can be third, can't it? Yeah, no, your, your argument of like the fact that my the campaign would be outright bottom of the list for me but the multiplayer would be third higher. is good third is good yeah third out of four yeah but i mean yeah. what it's a what a bronze, collection of games bronze there. place position oh, i can see your cursor hovering are oh, you just doing it i'm just doing it yeah yeah i mean yeah, we can mean, always change it back but i think we haven't even got 10 games yet and yeah third is good you know so like if we're gonna if it was a top 10 and it was third that's pretty good right yeah, but it's not a top 10, and I feel like... No, but it will I'm, be in I'm, a year's I'm, time when you say it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to fight to keep it <laughs> there for a while. What I guess we'll do mm, yeah. is may- maybe... Um, <laughs> I-, I think a lot of it is me projecting the fun I will have with the multiplayer based on how much I like it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I feel like exactly. maybe in a year's time... Because who knows? Maybe free for free won't... Maybe they'll add a, something that I hate, and it will ruin the experience, yeah. you know? So maybe in a year's time, I can kind of bring back the argument and we'll see where it is could you imagine if we did that every time like i think old me will really like this <laughs> yeah future me is well into i mean i hate yeah. it but future me is gonna love that stuff <laughs> i'm i'm perfectly happy to let it be above on Amisha warlords which is only fourth and also that's a game of its time it's a good game yeah same as halo good so game you, so you would have really wanted it to be underneath on Imusha. definitely Okay, I I, I feel because, better. Because like, the but thing like... is with Halo, the thing is with Halo Infinite as well. I said to my brother at the because it was Christmas at the weekend with my brother and my family, and I said to them like, I see no reason to play Halo Infinite over any of the other Halo games because they're all the same. I feel like yeah. I've played that game four times. Is, is that Whereas the campaign Amusha, you're talking? Yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, and the multiplayer. Yeah. The multiplayer is the same. No, nah, so that's that's, the same. That, that's where I would. Because that's where a small difference in terms of like the way that the sprinting works. And so that's where like, those minor difference go a long way. And we didn't even talk about yeah. the guns, how great a bunch of the, the new guns are and such. So like, I feel like, you know, and then the equipment, the grappling and stuff and the maps, like it, that, that stuff makes a big difference. So I, I think that's just once again comes down to like, you know, I'm sure say we don't play, um, I don't know, like football games. And I'm sure, like, mm. someone who plays loads of football games, for us, we just see them as all the same, but someone who plays loads oh, of them will saying. know that... Yeah, or, yeah, like, me yeah. in fighting games. Like, I would yeah, struggle yeah. to see the minute differences between, you know, Street Fighter 4 and 5. They, they're they yeah. probably... I would play them both basically the same, you know? So mm. I, I feel like that's that's just what that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. But at the same time, if I said to you what games are similar to Onimusha Warlords, you'd be like, it's sequels but it was the first one. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd say whereas like Halo Cry Infinite, what's stuff, similar to Halo and... Infinite, like what every other Halo game. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue against yeah. that. It's a long running, you know, twenty years as we said franchise. You know, but yeah. you know, I'm not. I'm not going to argue against that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, the fact that you wanted it under Onimushin, you've already sacrificed that. You made a great <laughs> point about the fact that I'm only fighting for the multiplayer, you know, which is, you know, the part that you probably cared about least going into it. I feel like I, I feel like this is as close as we're going to get with us, you know, mm-hmm. our joint passions. Because I did love The Forgotten City. You know, I, I really enjoyed that yeah. game. So it's not like I'm... Um, but I don't think really The Forgotten City is not long for number two. That is... <laughs> The more I think about it, the more I'm like, the Forgotten City, number two. Like, it was good. I mean, for like- there's only four games, to be fair. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's, yeah. All, it's all very open. Uh, but yeah, should we, uh, should we chat? So we just did a, a first-person shooter for, uh, for this podcast. And for the next podcast, what type of game are we doing? First-person shooter. <gasps> but very different. we're doing the Progenitor. The, yeah. Well, one of the first ever first-person shooters, which is Doom. Which I think came out in 1993. We're doing okay. that version. It's on Game Pass. Uh, runs on all the new consoles. It runs on everything. That's kind of the funny thing yeah. about it. There's probably a phone version. Some, you know, there's... there is a phone version. There's even a phone RPG version. Yeah. So if your phone doesn't even run it properly, you can play. But isn't the RPG that like version. the old types of phones? Isn't that like yeah. non non touch screen? That's a that's a feature phone. That's what yeah. They call it. A feature Get out phone your version. old Sony Ericsson and uh, yeah. I can't a, believe you remember that. that. <laughs> yeah, I, re- I remember the game. They, 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 um, didn't they do so, a sequel? They did another one, didn't they? What another RPG one? Yeah, or maybe it was a maybe it was Wolfenstein RPG. They did another mm. of that that mm. type of game. Um, well, we're doing Doom, and I feel like Doom is short enough that we might be able to have a bit more like trivia, cool like making of facts stuff like that. Maybe we could throw them in because the game is yeah. not the game is like an hour long. So yeah, yeah, and <laughs> just to make it like I know you made it quickly, but it makes it absolutely clear. We're talking about the original Doom because there's another game came yeah. out in 2016 called Doom. If, We're not if doing you, that one. If you turn it on and you go, oh, the graphics are pretty good. You're playing the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. That's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. But I, for, for, for its time, I think, you know, I, it wasn't that long ago since I last played it. And I remember being quite impressed then. So I'm, uh, I'm mm. looking forward to, uh, to giving it uh, another go. And uh, yeah, it'd be good to, to kind of compare that to, to Halo Infinite and see... Um, yeah, how much how much <laughs> more forgiving will it be? <laughs> Knocks it down the list. <laughs> it overtakes it. Oh, no. That's got multiplayer as well. Should we give that a go? <laughs> yeah, we could give that a go. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, if you would like to leave a comment or a bonus point about Doom, we did say before, like just do it anywhere. But like the fact of the matter is, we're growing, and we did get a YouTube comment. And for some reason, I wrote down there's a YouTube comment. I didn't write down the comment, so I lost it. <laughs> so in future, best thing to do is just tweet at us or tweet at the tweet about yeah. the game. So, so we'll we, 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 find it. We're going to tweet out saying next podcast is Doom. If you reply to, to that tweet, please just try and do it as... The reason why we like it as tweets as well is because there's a word limit. So yeah. <laughs> rather than as a comment. So what we're looking for is very specific points or questions about a very <laughs> single part of the game. So rather than just giving like a mini review of the game, like just saying about yeah. like, God, the opening's, you know, so good because of this or, you know, this gun yeah, is yeah. great because of this. You know, like one very specific point that we can c- kind of use. If you comment that, then you've got a much better chance uh, of us uh, actually using it. Yeah, because like we're interested in what you've got to say, but we're not that interested. <laughs> 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 That's just how that came across a little bit, but that's not the case. You've been such a forward operating base, this uh, podcast. Ollie. I know, I've been <laughs> such a little FOB, haven't I? <laughs> I don't know oh, why I got... I, I, it's because I like, got up and I was like, oh, I'm so ready to podcast today. Like, this is going to be such a good episode. And <laughs> yeah. then just feeling myself a little bit. I probably shouldn't. Next one, I'll wind it in and I'll go back to my quieter, timid yeah. self, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, at the bonus points on social media, unless you're on TikTok, which we are, which is... The bonus points, YT. Interestingly, though, we do actually own at the bonus points. We just can't remember how to log in. Yeah, so, <laughs> we saved the is. URL, so no one else will have it. Yeah. We won't even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and check out the TikTok because there'll be an exclusive video of Joe flossing going up. Uh, well, whenever he uh, films it. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wait uh, there, Joe. Yeah, be uh, sit sit patiently for that one, guys. You're going to be waiting a while. So. <laughs> 
I did, I did put on I did put on Twitter that there would be a video of us flossing as a joke, and then I was oh, just you? like, "Should I do it?" And I was like, "No, I can't do it anyway. So I'm too old." So yeah. something I used to do on streams <laughs> would be like people would ask me to do something embarrassing, and I'd set like a high limit for someone to donate to charity and I'd do it. Oh, so, so that's there is, a nice idea. So there's a clip out there of me Naruto running across the room. Oh, well, someone of them. commented it on one of our things as a gif. Oh, really? So yeah. So that's, that, yeah. that's what that's from. Was I was like, like th- that's kind of win-win. I don't care about being embarrassed. I wouldn't do it otherwise. I also had like water poured over my head and stuff, you know, like just like oh, yeah, people trying to do it. But then like, but yeah. I do like, you know, be hundreds of pounds to charity for like yeah. these stupid things. So yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe one day someone will make a bonus points gif. Oh. Oh, what do I? I'm going to sure be I of my that? good side for that. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think about like framing my good side. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll just do a Naruto run. <laughs> Naruto run back and forth. The Not gi- much space the, for it. But. The gift will never be your good side. It will always be like <laughs> that time you like went to take a sip of drink in the podcast and dribbled a bit. That, that will be the gift. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have rambled yeah, on way too long. Is there anything else on. you want to share or shall we uh, call it a wrap on this podcast? Um, no, just thanks for subscribing as always and reaching out to us. It's really nice. It's all new to me, so... It's quite interesting and lovely hearing and seeing you all. Yeah, and thanks for all of the uh, the lovely feedback on the uh, the Christmas uh, special quiz. Um, yeah, we're not planning to do any more quizzes at the moment, but that will hopefully be once a year, or maybe we'll do uh, some more little. But someone special asked things. if we do more, and I was like, "Man, no, no. it's my birthday soon. Why not?" <laughs> a quiz all about your life. <laughs> you got oh, no, that would be no. That's too much. No, you don't know anything about me. I'm a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway that will be the end uh, of this uh, week's episode of the bonus points uh, yeah please uh, give us your comments for Doom uh, of course there'll be more uh, best of threes uh, coming up in between uh, now and then but apart from that thank you so much for watching or listening and we'll see you in the next one bye cheers bye bye